In her book, Borderlands La Frontera, Gloria Saldúa depicts the obstacles in her own life as borders that she has to overcome. Just like her, we all have borders that need to be crossed. These borders do not necessarily have to be physical. They can be emotional, and sometimes a person may never overcome theirs. In our case, our borders have shaped us into the individuals we are today and the educators we hope to be tomorrow. My border was put up the day I lost my mother. She was more than just the person who raised and fed me. She was my best friend, my teacher in life, and above all, she has been the greatest mentor I've had. After her death, all that remained was just me, two little grieving siblings, and a lost father that had no clue how to put the pain behind him to raise three little girls that needed him more than ever. So I told myself that I needed to grow up and fast because my sisters needed, and I truly believe they deserved, a role model and a mother figure. I was only 16 years old, and crossing this border was the most difficult thing I had to do as a child, but I am glad I had the courage because a new persona was born thereafter. I grew up to be this individual that feels responsible for the well-being and problems of others. And I've always had this feeling of compassion and understanding, and it makes me proud to help children and young adults that need mentoring, advice, and just someone to talk to. This is how I decided to become a teacher. It, was, it has been my greatest reason, and it is my desire to give my students more than just instruction and homework assignments. I want to be the positive influence in their lives and the role model that I needed. In other words, my teaching philosophy is to not only be a teacher, but a mentor to my students. When I was 16, I came out as gay to my family. This was a big deal because according to the Mexican culture, being gay is something shameful. And I felt really ashamed of who I am at the time. After I came out, my mom and I had a falling out. I moved away with my dad to my grandpa's house where I had no room to sleep but an old couch. My grades went from having A's and B's to failing. I felt as though I had no one to rely on. When I graduated high school, I started working more. I went to college because I had to and not because I wanted to. I met a couple of friends that helped me embrace who I am and I slowly started surrounding myself with positive people in my life. Over time, my mother and I started rebu rebuilding our relationship. But for the rest of my family, my, ser my sexual orientation became un secreto a voces meaning that while well, everybody knows, yet nobody wants to talk about it. I have come out to my grandmother about four times to this day, and yet she still tells me that I'm going to end up marrying a woman. It is painful to hear that she doesn't fully accept who I am, but she will always love me. Once I accepted myself for who I am and knew how much my family loved me, I started developing a passion for school and started getting good grades in college. These experiences have helped me understand that many students face situations that they might not be able to talk about, situations that hurt them, whether it be emotionally, physically, or economically. As a future educator, I want to provide my students with plenty of opportunities to redeem themselves. I want to feel that if anything goes wrong at home or anywhere else, they at least know that someone out there believes in their potential that low or failing grades don't define who they are. There have been many cases where I have not done well in a course, for example, Calculus 2. And, you know, being a first generation college student and having great people around me, friends, family, advisors, mentors, professors, they always seem to give me just enough reason to keep going and end up being successful in classes like that. So when it comes to teaching, you know, I have a certain perspective with, um, you know, here, especially in the Valley, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are going through the same thing I'm going through. 
and I know how that feels like. Um, I also know, you know, in college level or in any level, sometimes you're not always going to get it the first time, but it shouldn't stop you from trying. So a lot of teachers nowadays, um, they tend to, not a lot, just very few, the very few, they, they feel like they teach the same subject over and over again, right? So when a student gets there, enters their class and doesn't understand it the first time, then the professor kind of, they get confused by it because, you know, but it's because they know it so well, but they, they forget the perspective from the student. So the benefit I can take from all this is entering secondary level, um, I'm able to understand students more um, and really really help them with their weaknesses and improve them with their strengths because that's what in my undergraduate career that's what all these professors advisors my friends my classmates have taught me and it's a great experience when my dad passed away my mom and i moved to the united states in hopes of a better life unfortunately when I crossed the U.S.-Mexico border, another border was created for me. Being undocumented has become one of the most difficult borders I've had to face. I came here in 2012, when I was just 15 years old, and I spent most of my high school years feeling like an outsider, even after learning English and assimilating to the American culture. I was always afraid of being discovered and I would often feel discouraged from working hard at school because I thought that there was no point of going to school if I couldn't go to college or even work. However, things started to change a little bit when I discovered that I could go to college. But any hope that I had died with the 2016 presidential election. Once again, I felt as if I had to hide my legal status like it was some kind of capital offense. But slowly, I realized that all borders are man-made and can be eventually overcome one way or another. To this day, I have not entirely crossed my border, but that has shaped me into the person that I am today. And when I become a teacher, I want to empower my students so that despite whatever border they're crossing, they feel welcome in my classroom and eager to learn.